PhD student from uh, Laboratoire Hypercurien, University of uh, Jean Monnerre Saint Etienne, member of University of Lyon. And I will present to you part of my PhD work entitled Study of Point Defects in Asdromon Optical Fibers, Germanium Dopt Optical Fibers uh, using cathodoluminescence. Uh, this work has been done with collaboration uh, with the University of Nova Gorica in Slovenia. So, um, first of all, I will uh, make a short introduction where I will uh, explain a little bit the context of the study, then experimental details. After that, the results concerning the cathodoluminescence spectroscopy and imaging, and pre irradiation effects on the germanium lone pair centers, and then the GLPC kinetics, and finally, conclusion perspectives. So, um, nowadays, optical fibers are more and more used in such harsh, uh, harsh environments uh, for data transfer and, and also as sensors. Um, we have uh, several uh, radiative environments, such as space, large hadron collider, ether, nuclear power plants, and laser megajoule. And we need uh, to take into account several conditions, uh, principally the dose and the dose rate of this kind of environments. Among the diversity of optical fibers, the germanium doped ones are of great importance, since for the telecommunication grade, we dope optical fibers with germanium, and also we need its sensitivity in order to make fiber grat uh, black gratings. So as I think uh, all of you know already, optical fibers consist in three parts, core, cladding, and coating. In, a, uh, in order to allow the light guiding inside the core of the optical fiber, we need to dope either its core or its cladding with other elements. And usually optical fibers are made of silica, and here I'm really grateful to Mr. Fabrizio Mezzina for its uh, uh, excellent presentation yesterday where he explained the defects in silica. Okay, so when we put these optical fibers in such uh, radiative environments, three main effects will be produced. The first one is the radiation-induced attenuation, which is responsible of the degradation of the transmitted signal via the absorbing point defects. The second effect is the radiation-induced emission, which is resulting from the light emitted by some uh, defects being excited by the radiations, which decrease the signal to, ratio, to noise ratio according to the spectral domain. And finally, the compaction or the densification. So uh, the irradiation can cause a densification effects, which will change the refractive index. All these effects limits most of the applications. So uh, the, here we can see that the importance of the defect identification will allow us to avoid them. In the present um, study, I will focus on the radiation-induced emissions. So under uh, an ionizing radiations, new absorption band will appear, will be created in the UV visible spectral domain. Among the germanium-related point defects, we have the GE1, which is a tetrahedron of germanium with an entrapped electron, GE prime, which is a dangling uh, germanium atom, G GLPC, germanium lone pair center, is germanium atom with two oxygen atoms and a lone pair of electrons. GE2 is um, a GLPC that lost one electron, Okay, for these defects, we have other models, and it's still debated. In the right uh, side of the plant, we have an example of absorption uh, spectrum, and here we have a band, absorption band at uh, 5.1 eV related to the GLPC. It was the same band that uh, Mr. Messina was uh, talking about yesterday. So I will um, be interested to study of the GLPC. Here, we have a simple schematic energy level of the GLPC. Uh, this defect is characterized with uh, two pair of electrons. We have um, two absorption bands, the first one at 5.1 eV, the second one at 3.7 eV, two emission bands. 
uh, at uh, 4.2 EV and 3.1 EV. Um, in this study, we will present this uh, study of this emission band. Okay, so why the GLPC? Actually, these defects is uh, induced during the fabrication process of the optical fiber, and it is a precursor center. It's, it, could, uh, it converts into other point defects enter, uh, under irradiation, such as GE1 and GE2. So, online study of uh, its behavior will help us to better understand its mechanism of, of bleaching and of conversion. So, it plays an important role in order to improve the response of germanosilicate optical fibers and their irradiation. The question is where it is located in the optical fiber and what are the parameters responsible for its uh, creation. For this, we are using cathode luminescence. So, uh, basically, it's a scanning electron microscope, which is equipped with EDX major uh, detector, energy dispersive X-ray, which allow us to make chemical analysis of our samples, and cathode luminescence detector. Okay, this last one um, consists in, okay, electron beam that will excite our sample, and using parabolic mirror, we will collect the emitted light and couple it to a detector. Using this, we are able to make a cathode luminescence panchromatic imaging uh, where we will collect all the light emitted by the sample. Cathode luminescence monochromatic imaging uh, by uh, choosing only one wavelength and cathode luminescence spectroscopy. For our study, the used parameters are 10 kilo electron volt of beam energy, 15 nanoampere of prop current, which give us a penetration depth of about 1.3 micrometers and spatial resolution of about one micrometer. So here is my sample. It's two steps germanium um, doped multimode optical fibers uh, my, provided by X Blue and manufactured using modified chemical vapor deposition method. Here we have the two steps of the germanium. The first one at about nine weight percent, and the second one here is at about five weight percent. I used um, a pristine optical fiber. Another one irradiated with UV continuum laser at 244 nanometers. And the last one, it was irradiated uh, gamma rays, those up to uh, 9 mega gray in silica. Okay. Um, the pan sorry. The panchromatic um, imaging shows that we have uh, the main luminescence is situated, situated in the core of the fiber because here we have... Um, a transverse cross section of the optical fiber. In order to identify the nature of this luminescence, we make cathode luminescence spectroscopy. And here in the core, we have a huge luminescence at about 400 nanometers, which is a signal to the GLPC defects. For uh, the pure silica cnadin, we have other point defects such as ODC2 and uh, NBUHC. It's intrinsic uh, de silica defects. For uh, the 9 mega gray radiated sample, always we have the luminescence in uh, the core of the optical fibers, but after 30 minutes of 10 kilo electron volt electron beam exposure, we can see that the luminescence have been decreased and um, it is less in the core in the first level of germanium compared with the second one. For the UV uh, irradiated sample, we observe that uh, also the luminescence have been decreased and uh, the same way, in the same way. For the pristine fiber, we, we obtained the, the same uh, observations. So, what I did here, um, using monochromatic imaging, I just take the signal of GLPC at 400 nanometers and I make uh, the GLPC radial profile along the radius of uh, the, the optical fiber. So here I can, we can see that the first scan give us um, a slightly less uh, GLPC signal for the UV uh, irradiated fiber and more uh, decrease for the nine mega gray uh, irradiated optical fiber. This 
maybe because uh, we didn't irradiate enough the UV optical fiber. For, um, in order to confirm this, we perform photoluminescence measurements, and we can see that uh, the 9 mega gray optical fiber, the signal of GLPC of 9 mega gray irradiated optical fiber is less. Uh, some quantitative, okay. The ratio between the pristine and 9 mega gray using uh, cathode luminescence measurements is about 0.77, and using photoluminescence measurements is about 0.63. Now, um, we will irradiate with electrons, and we, here we have the first scan, and here we have after 30 minutes of irradiation. We can see that um, after 30 minutes of irradiation, <coughs> the level of uh, the GLPC signal is the same for the three samples. And uh, we can see that, firstly, we had more GLPC in the um, region doped more with germanium, but after radiation, we have less in this region. In order to see the impact of germanium amount, we make a series of monochromatic images uh, in 3 micrometers and in 25 micrometers in order uh, to, to see the effect of germanium. And here is the kinetic of uh, the GLPC for the three samples. The first region uh, adopted at 9% of germanium, we can see that uh, the GLPC have been bleached with an exponential way until reaching a saturation level. The same, uh, the same behavior uh, have been done for the other uh, amount of germanium, but for this it has, it has bleached uh, faster because we had more germanium. So after 30 minutes of irradiation, the GLPC concentration is lower where the germanium amount is higher. To conclude, the GLPC is the most present luminescent defect in the visible um, spectral domain in germanium-related optical fibers. Using cathode luminescence, we are able to perform specially resolved in-situ measurements following the evolution of one single emitting defect, such as uh, germanium lumper center. By irradiating with electron beam, the GLPC concentration is lower where uh, the amount of germanium is higher, which could be explained by conversion mechanism between GLPC and other point defects, such as GE1, GE2. After gamma radiation up to 9 mega gray, the GLPC signal decreases of about 30%, and after sufficiently 10 kilo electron volt elect electron exposure, the GLPC intensity reaches a saturation level which is independent from the nature of the irradiated samples. Thank you for your attention. Thank, thank you. We have time for a few questions. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do you have some information about uh, the optical absorption of the fibers? Are there some uh, radiation-induced optical absorption band, for example? Okay, here I didn't report the data, but uh, we, we have this uh, kind of uh, data in literature. Yes, I have my colleagues that... Uh, mm -hmm. Because the maybe there is some reabsorption also of the emitted light, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. Thank you. Are there uh, other questions? Uh, I, I was wondering, you, you, you said that these defects are mainly introduced during the fiber drawing process. Sorry? You, you, you said that the, um, the defects were created while the fiber has been drawn. So have you checked that, for example, by looking at the preform before the, uh, before the, before the fiber is drawn okay. to see if you s see the same type of phenomena? Yeah, I didn't check uh, the preform using cathode luminescence, but we have other data using photoluminescence and absorption. And it looks like, okay, at least for 9 mega gray uh, uh, irradiation, we have the same behavior. Okay. Are there any other questions? If that's not the case, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.